beleza. Out and we're turned on this morning. We're good. Let's offer up a word of prayer over the offering this morning. Father God, we just thank you that we can bring forward this offering and all of the offerings out of our lives. And we just ask that you bless them and multiply them around our community and our world with the message of salvation through faith in your risen son, Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Mic check one two, mic check one two. That lower, 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 somewhere right ballpark in there. <laughs> okay. Thank you, front row. You still have your drums. Back row, you can hear us. So, more than all. <laughs> Do we have any big announcements this week? <clears throat> yes, no youth group. Little or big kids at all were no youth groups this week because. They get out early on Wednesday, and we can all get ready for the big celebration on Thursday for Thanksgiving. Being thankful. Kind of a good theme to run with for a while to think on. How thankful am I? <clears throat> Let's uh, open up with a, one more word of prayer this morning. <clears throat> and Father God, we just thank you that we can gather together this morning, and each morning that we are able to. We just... Thank you that we can be your children, learning about you and how to grow in our relationship with you and how to grow in our relationship with each other and the world around us. We just thank you that thankfulness is a key part of our growth with you and with others. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you would speak your reminders of being thankful with and for others in our lives through my words this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So... For our morning kickoff, Mark 16, verse 15. And then he told them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. <clears throat> so as we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and being filled up with the Holy Spirit and empowered by the Holy Spirit, and God's Spirit being alive in us, and being strengthened each day, what can we do with that? We can go into and preach the good news. Not just, I don't have to run my mouth about what's going on in the world, but I can let each and every person around me know the good news. Why are you smiling today, Dan? What is your reason for smiling in the face of this? Or how are you only smiling that much in the face of that? You know, it could be good or indifferent either way. But, uh, Staying strengthened and built up each day in the power of the Holy Spirit and the, the strength of the Holy Spirit. And thinking about food, since we have a possible big meal coming up this coming Thursday, and thinking about staying strengthened and built up with all this joyful good turkey and potatoes in various formats and pie in various formats and all the yummy goodness in it, every way, shape, and form that it might come. We can stay strengthened and built up to be thankful. And the same thing with God's Holy Spirit. The more I fill up on His Holy Spirit, spending time with Him 
<clears throat> excuse me, spending time with him in prayer and in meditation and thinking, God, what are you wanting to show me that your will is for me today? What, what do we need to do today, Father? What can we do today and just enjoy this journey? We can stay strengthened and built up with the Holy Spirit just like we do food. And uh, I want to look at Mark 16, verse 15 in a different version, just for a little different clarity on it. This is in the ESV version. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. And two key points jumped out at me from both of these translations of this verse. Who are we to go and tell this to? All, everything. The whole creation, all the world, every bit of God's magnificent creation needs to know the good news and the gospel. What is the good news? What is the gospel? You know, we hear those words thrown out around a lot at church and we hear people talk about them, but what are they? We need a definition for them. What is the good news? You are loved. I am loved by the one who created everything, all of it. He loves us and we can be his children when we choose to come into and believe in him and have faith in his risen son, Jesus of Nazareth, opening the door to being a part of his family and his children. And as we are filled with God's Holy Spirit and as we're empowered by him, we're enabled to do that part of proclaiming it, telling the whole world about the gospel. Because I need to know how to share the good news before I can share the good news. Does that make sense a little bit? And uh, giving thanks, I believe, helps empower us in our lives and enables the ability to proclaim the gospel and the good news. And in 1 Chronicles 16, verses 8 to 9, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Sing to him. Yes, sing his praises. Tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. So have I done that today? Have I done that this week, this whatever time frame I want to look at? Have I told someone about the good deeds and the God's good news to me? How God's gospel has been alive in my life so that they can in turn look at their life and see his gospel alive and his good news alive for them. I know looking back in my past history, if I dig deep enough, there was a lot of times where God's gospel and his good news was alive for me. But I had my little blinders on. You know, we've seen the pictures of the, the horses and the way they used to plow the fields. They put the blinders on them so all they could do is stay focused in one direction. And they didn't look out at anything around them. And there was times in my life I know where, and I still might get that way. Where I get the blinders on and so focused on, okay, I'm only looking this way. I need to stay focused. I need to stay focused on this to accomplish God's will for me. But my blinders, with those blinders on, I can't see his good news and the gospel around me in all the ways he's wanting to show me. So I need to keep my peripheral visions, my side vision open so I can remember that, hey, God's love is alive to me right here in this person, in this relationship, in this situation. God is showing me, hey, son, I love you. Daughter, here, come here. I love you, daughter. So if I'll remember to not put the blinders on and, to, and then to share about it. Not just sit there and, hey, I've got this fun little, got all this goodies right here. And just dwelling them to glory for just myself. But remembering to tell everyone about his wonderful deeds. So that just like light coming through a diamond can be magnified and shine in different directions. God's love coming into me can be magnified and shined in different directions. So that someone else who hasn't felt the light of his love can feel that light and say, hey, I get it now. I get why you're so happy and why you can feel loved by God. Because I feel loved by God now too. <clears throat> and 
talking about the miracles, whether they be the, the big miracles or the smaller, littler miracles in life. They help me to focus and remember and remain focused on my Heavenly Father. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And from that, we can go on to the loving thy neighbor as thyself. And sharing how God has blessed me surrounds my heart and my mind with his goodness and his truth and his love reminders from his Holy Spirit. Because we looked at last week, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit and what he can do and the, that he reminds us of what Jesus told us. Jesus told us, you're loved. And God's Holy Spirit can consistently remind, <clears throat> excuse me, consistently remind us of that. And that reminder that I'm loved by the Creator as my Heavenly Father can help me get through any situation and have the strength and the wisdom to go into any situation and think, okay, we can do this, God. I know we can do this together as your child. I walk into this with you. And knowing that helps me to be able to share the good news. Hey, friends, guess what? You need to know what I know. <laughs> However excited I can say it in the situation and in that relationship, it might be that excited. Hey, friends, you need to know what I know. Come on, let me tell you about it. Or it might just be, let's sit down and have a talk, a chat, a cup of coffee. I'd like to share some good news with you. And then as they share their, what's going on in their life with me, I can share, oh, that sounds really similar to uh, a situation that I went through, and this is how God showed his love to me in that situation. Cheers. Thank you. So just having those reminders from God's Holy Spirit in the moments when I need a reminder that I'm loved by God. Because I think we could all, if we wanted to have a testimony time up here, we could spend quite a while on needing to have reminders of God's love for us. And so his Holy Spirit can remind me, yeah, you remember this verse, how I told you I loved you? And how I showed you this verse applying to your life in this situation? But, uh, so sharing the good news about his love, Psalms 136, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. And I can share that good news with someone else who needs to know. Oh, God just, if God's looking down on me. I feel so... He's, you know, talking with people that feel like God has the big lightning bolt up there ready to strike down on them. I know I've had conversations with people that you could tell that's where their mindset was at. <clears throat> and just encouraging them and reminding them that God's mercy endures forever. His love and his forgiveness for you endures forever. If you're willing to reach the hand up and say, yes, Father. I want to accept your gift of love and your gift of grace. And so uh, when should I do this? When should I share this, share the gospel? When should I share my testimony with someone? In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18, <clears throat> always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. <clears throat> so what is God's will for me this day? Each and every day that I wake up. To always be joyful and never stop praying. And being thankful in all circumstances. I love that we can bring forth the point of not being thankful for all circumstances. I don't have to be thankful for this tragedy, 
But through the tragedy, I can be thankful to God that he will help carry myself and each and every other person, their heart and their mind and their soul, through whatever situation we are each going through. And I like that we have this uh, upcoming Thursday, that we have one, one day labeled, specifically labeled, for a 365 day a year lifestyle that I can choose to maintain with the power his Holy Spirit reminds me of. Thanksgiving. You know, we have a big day to celebrate Thanksgiving, but if I'm going to apply it, I can be that way every day. Just walking out each and every day thankful that I have a Heavenly Father and a Creator who loves me. And loves me enough to wrap his arms around me and pull me up and pick me up. And not only me, but all those, each and every person that I can share the fact that he loves them too. And that they will accept it and open the, their minds and their hearts to receiving God's love. Now, 1 Corinthians 10, verses 30 to 31. If I can thank God for the food and enjoy it, why should I be condemned for eating it? So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So as we get ready to prepare for a tasty meal on Thursday, hopefully, for each one of us, we can go forward thinking, okay, God, I trust that this is good and that all this food is from you so I can enjoy it and I can thank you for it. And as I eat it and drink it, to live in a country where we can celebrate this and where we can enjoy this freedom to get together and gather and talk about anything that we choose to talk about and watch a big football game if there's a big football game on that day, if that's the passion that everybody has. And just conversate and play games together and grow in our relationships with each other. This is a good reminder for our special label day of Thanksgiving. And as I pray and prepare for gathering with others on Thanksgiving, you know, getting prepping myself and prepping my, my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions, I can be encouraged by Colossians 3, verse 17. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him, through him, to God the Father. So as I go forward today from church this morning, and as I go into, I think, the week before Thanksgiving, a Thanksgiving celebration, the time after Thanksgiving, am I going forward as a representative of Jesus of Nazareth, my risen Lord and Savior? Is the world around me able to say, yes, I want to know more about being a Christian? You know, the title Christian has had lots of definitions and labels put to it by society over the course of time. So what kind of a definition am I being for someone else who might be curious about being a Christian, might be curious about God, might just want to know more with whatever their life situation is? What kind of a representative Am I being for my Lord and Savior today? And I can pray and ask for God's wisdom and guidance and his Holy Spirit reminders and power for how to be the representative that I need to be to each and every person that I'll come in contact with. And a lot of the people, the, big rep the good representative that I can be is this one. Remembering to be that smiling, happy person that's joyful, regardless of what they see going on around me, you're still happy and you're still up, uplifted and going forward. How? Why? What? Let's sit down for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and let me tell you about why I'm happy and joyful and why I can have this smile on my face. I think if we're looking for examples of thankfulness and consistency, Daniel the prophet is an example I can follow to face and in the face of good or in trouble. 
In Daniel 6, verse 10, and just prior to this, you know, Daniel has been taken into the Babylonian kingdom and put under the, the rule of uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the all of the king's advisors said, you need to make a law and a rule that no one can pray to anything but this giant image that you just built. But Daniel was faithful and consistent. And every day, he went up and with the windows open towards Jerusalem, you know, he wasn't hiding in a dark corner, but it was, I'm going to pray to my God, who I trust and I know every day, consistently. And of course, the other people saw it and found out about it, but Daniel 6, verse 10. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down, as usual, in his upstairs room, with its windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. He was consistently thankful, regardless of what the world around him was doing and what's going on in his life. He was consistently thankful to God and was, wasn't afraid of the world around him seeing him being thankful. And I can go back in my little dark, quiet, quiet corner and pray, and, thank you, thank you, God. Or I can be out in the world and letting others see, hey, he's thankful and he's claiming to be a Christian and upright and everything, but, but he's got all these things going on in his life right now. How are you still thankful, bro, brother, person? Sister, how are you still thankful through this time frame? In Hebrews 13, verses 15 to 16, Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. So being thankful to God and appreciative of all that he does and has laid out for us, I was pondering and wondering, how can I make God, can I help God be thankful? What can I do to allow my Heavenly Father to be thankful like he wants me to be thankful? These, sacrifice, these are the sacrifices that please God. So am I remembering to do good and to share with those in need? In the book of Acts, it talks about several people who God chose to keep on this earth longer and raise them from the dead. And prior to those them being raised from the dead, they are specified as people who continually did good and shared with those who were in need. And God wants people that are sharing and generous and giving people around so that the world can come to know about his love for them. One thing I'm thankful for is uh, Jesus' full and total likeness to us in our emotions. You know, Jesus is God. He's the Son of God. And sometimes I, in my own mind, I've kind of put him on a little bit of a podium out there that, you know, it's, he's up there and past and beyond humanness a little bit, but in the, uh, we can look at the shortest verse in the Bible, I believe it is, John eleven thirty five, 35, and we can see Jesus' humanness. Jesus wept. And this was at his friend Lazarus' death and passing. And, you know, Jesus knows he's the Son of God. He knows what he's going to do. But he could still have the human emotions of weeping and saying, you know, sad that his friend had had to have to die for people to see his glory and realize that he's the son of God. And uh, we continue on in John 11, verses 41 to 43. We see that Jesus is thankful for God's provisions. Then, they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you will always hear me, 
but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus was raised to life and came forth out of the grave. But Jesus, the Son of God, you know, knowing what was going to happen even, probably, was still thankful and appreciative of God, his Heavenly Father's provision for him. And he had the humanness and the emotions to weep prior to that. And he also uh, gives us a good example of thankfulness for God's provisions for the loaves and the fish in Mark 8, verse 6. So Jesus told all the people to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves, thanked God for them, and broke them into pieces. He gave them to his disciples who distributed the bread to the crowd. And everyone eats and is totally filled, and they end up having leftovers. I don't remember exactly how many baskets the le disciples picked up of leftovers after this, but God's provision was an overflow, an abundance. It's not just, a, okay, here's the crumbs that you need, kid, kids. It's the, here, here's my blessings of love and the expanse of the blessings of love for us. So my big question for myself today is, have I taken time to be thankful to my Heavenly Father for His provisions for me? Am I remembering that all my provision, provisions come from my Heavenly Father? Every provision and every blessing that I have comes from Him. I might be blessed and it might come through your hands to me, but I trust and believe that it still comes from my Heavenly Father. And His blessings for you might come through my hands to you or through someone else's hands and actions to you. And our words, the power of our tongue, can be, provide God's blessing of love and life and strength to those who get to hear the words that we say to them. Hopefully I'm, I'm striving to try to be consistent with my words with my kids. And not just the actual words that are coming out, but also, as you all might know and think and remember in personal history, you know, Sometimes that tone of voice might have a little bit of a, a tick to it for those young ears. And I think I see a whole room full of young ears. Looking in a mirror, I see young ears. You know, we're encouraged to come before God as children and come before him with the faith as children. So we can come, come forth and just with that encouragement and the kids, kids likeness, listening to that the tone of the voice of God. I love you, son. I love you, daughter. Because of God's promises and his love shown to, to us, I can fulfill, and each one of us, I think, can fulfill Philippians 4, verse 6, each day that we rise and shine in his love. Don't worry about anything Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. So we can get ready to go forth for a very thankful, joyful week, friends. And as we're thinking on thankfulness and the love that we can be thankful for, do we have anyone we'd like to lift up or anything that someone would like to share? Thankfulness to God, anyone would like to share? I'll bring the mic down and pass it around. Prayer for Nancy for her leg yesterday. Yes, Nancy, for restoration in her leg. Sometimes God hits you in the back of the head and says, do what you're supposed to do. Uh, 14 years ago today, I was found unconscious and had brain surgery. 
so I'm thankful. Yes, praise God for restoration. Amen. Amen. Thank you for bringing a walking testimony here for us this morning. Mike and Laura. Yes, both uh, Mike and Laura Hicks are there. I headed to Rochester again today for working through the different situations for Mike getting the body to kick out whatever bug. these praises and requests for our Heavenly Father, so let's take them before him as his children this morning. And Father God, I just thank you that we can come before you as your children. We just lift up praises and thanks to you, Father, for, for restoration, for brain, brain surgery restoration, physical restoration for each of us who have received it thus far. And we just thank you, Father, for salvation through Jesus and through faith in his resurrection, Father. We also uh, would just like to claim that restoration and that promise of healing that you are the God who forgives all our sins and heals all of our diseases. For Nancy, for healing her leg, restoring her to ease and smoothness, for walking and enjoying life. And we also lift up Tim Hunt and ask that you would guide the doctors with hands and the process for him to have restoration up at the Pier Hospital. Father, we lift up everyone traveling through the Thanksgiving holiday and just ask that the Holy Spirit, you would guide each of them safely, remembering how to get where they need to go safely and remembering the true joy of just being thankful and appreciative of all the blessings that they have in their lives. Father, we lift up Wayne and Donna Bond, just ask for continued restoration, both of them for their bodies, and that the doctors involved with both of them would follow your wisdom and your guidance for helping their bodies to be fully restored. We also lift up John and Sheila Patel, and just pray for continued physical and emotional, mental, spiritual restoration for both of them. As they recover. And Father, I just lift up Mike and Laura Hicks. And just ask for continued full and complete restoration of health and wellness for both of them. And they could be grow in their relationship with you, with each other, and with the world around them, being the joyful couple that we all know them to be. We just thank you for the restoration that by Jesus' stripes, all of these people are healed, Father. And we lift up Bob and Missy Barkley, just ask for peace and provision for them, for the mission work, work that they do in Paraguay, helping that community come to know you and your love for them. And Father, we are thankful for, and we lift up all of our medical personnel, our military, our first responders, and ask for safety, and the wisdom and guidance for each of them and the services that they provide, the jobs that they do for us. We lift up all the people, the school people, the teachers, the kids, all the administrators, and just ask for joy and peace and wisdom for each of them as they prepare for a short week to celebrate being thankful at the end of the week. And Father God, we give you giant thanks and praises for the moisture that has come, Father. Thank you for the moisture come, that has come thus far, and we trust for the proper amounts of moisture in the proper forms so that life can continue to flow from the ground and keep all of the areas, keep all of the big areas that's been so dry alive and vibrant and enjoying prosperity and provision, Father. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name with the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Grace and peace, friends.